Welcome to Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, an investigative journalism program, or IJP, where I ask the question, Whatever Happened to the Pizza at McDonald's? A proud part of the Panoply Network, a wholly owned subsidiary of Pizza Plea Media. I'm your host, Brian Thompson, investigative journalist. Or at least, I am still an investigative journalist for now. After the events of recent days, it is becoming clear to me that I may, for the good of the United States and the rest of the world, have to temporarily renounce my journalism ship. This is all due to happenings within the world of presidential politics, which I will now explain thusly. For those not keeping up with the news, allow me to briefly recap the situation in the following recap. In the year 1788, the United States of America elected her first president, Mr. George Washington. Some years later, in the year of this year, the year 2024, it is time to elect a new president. Traditionally, this office has had very little to do with my journalistic mission of investigating McDonald's pizza and related matters such as whatever happened to it, etc., There was a brief time circa the year 2017 when I thought perhaps I might have a sympathetic ear in the executive branch in the person of former President Mr. Donald Trump on account of his very public and internationally embarrassing obsession with consuming mass quantities of McDonald's food. However, after an attempt on my part to infiltrate Mr. Trump's home, the White House, a.k.a. the Summer Mar-a-Lago, and make my plea for McDonald's pizza's return, I was thoroughly and humiliatingly rebuffed. And any hope I had to metaphorically bend Mr. Trump's sympathetic ear was figuratively blown to allegorical bits, when roughly six weeks ago, while Mr. Trump was campaigning to return to office, an assassin's bullet pierced said ear, continued through the bone plating of Mr. Trump's skull, and burrowed deeply into the jellied matter of his brain, killing him instantly. It was almost sad, considering I would surely never again be able to petition Mr. Trump to join my cause, unless and until his body is reanimated by whichever necromanceticians have managed to continue animating the flesh husk of former New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Even still, Mr. Trump's murder may turn out to be a mute point as his opponent, Ms. Kamala Harris, seems to be gaining a sizable lead in presidential polling. Ms. Harris was a late addition to the race, having assumed the mantle of the nominee of the Democratic Party after her predecessor, Mr. Joseph Biden, decided to step down so he could focus on preventing his organs from catastrophic failure. I had initially dismissed Miss Harris as a McDonald's pizza ally, as her public comments on the matter of pizza and pizza toppings indicated she is a partisan for anchovies, which have not been, nor will not never have be, officially sanctioned by the McDonald's Corporation. But, as discussed on last week's program, this whirlwind election cycle has revealed a startling revelation vis-a-vis Miss Harris that may prove quite impactful in my investigation. That is, that as a student at the University of Howard University in the mid-1980s, she worked as an employee at her local McDonald's franchise. While this was well before the early 1990s, a.k.a. the heyday of McDonald's pizza, it was during the time of the test marketing of an oval-shaped pizza-like product called the Muk Pizza, which, while not the same thing at all, is still not nothing. Since then, the Democratic Party has held its nominating convention, in which delegates declared Ms. Harris as the official nominee amidst a cavalcade of inspirational speeches from distinguished citizens, humiliated vice presidential possibility rejects, and at least one young woman who managed to secure a lucrative deal as the official poet for the Nike Corporation by demonstrating her expert use of a rhyming dictionary. In the course of these festivities, one such speech was delivered by Mr. Douglas M. Hoff, first and current husband of Ms. Kamala Harris, who chose this moment in the national spotlight to reveal that not only was his spouse a former employee of the McDonald's Corporation, 
but so too was he himself. What is more, he even attained the Employee of the Month and revealed the glamour shot he submitted for use on the in-store plaque commemorating this achievement. The detailed details about this detail concerning Mr. Emhoff's McDonald's employment are somewhat metaphorically murky. While I am mostly certain Miss Harris worked at the McDonald's location closest to the Howard University campus while she was a student there circa 1986, all we know about Mr. Emhoff's employment record is that he worked at McDonald's as a teenager, specifically after the age of 16, when his family moved from the state of New Jersey to the Los Angeles area of Southern California. According to official birth records, Mr. Emhoff was ejected from his mother's womb in the year 1964. So, he would have been 16 years old, roughly around the year of 1980. Due to the laws of how numbers are said, he would have ceased to be a teenager after the age of 19, which would mean his remaining teenage years would have had to fall between 1980 and 1983. This is some time before Miss Harris's tenure at McDonald's, and yet even further still before the heyday of McDonald's pizza. My years of extensive research on newspapers.com has not turned up any evidence of pizza or pizza-like programs at McDonald's at this time. But Mr. Emhoff's former employment still, potentially, could be used to further my two-pronged goals of investigating whatever happened to McDonald's pizza and advocating for its return. Firstly, having worked with a customer base yet to be exposed to McDonald's pizza, he would have first-hand memories of the empty looks of dissatisfaction and unfulfillment he surely saw in their jaundiced eyes. This look could be partially explained by the fact that in the early 1980s, one of the ingredients in McDonald's hamburger patties was ground asbestos. But it also would have had something to do with their spiritual connection to the collective unconscious, a force which knows no bounds of time or space and which would have manifested its knowledge of McDonald's pizza's eventual arrival by imparting a general feeling of dissatisfaction deep within the guts of these customers' medulla oblongati. Plus, after having been employees of the McDonald's Corporation, both Ms. Harris and Mr. Emhoff have surely been mistreated enough that they are somewhat radicalized against the company and would do anything to defy its wishes, up to and including bringing the pizza back. Furthermore, McDonald's matters in general have somewhat inexplicably become a major part of the Democratic Party's messaging in recent days. In addition to these new revelations about the nominee and her first and current husband's employment records, former President William Clinton said the following in his speech to the Democratic National Convention. When she was young, she worked at McDonald's. And she greeted every person with that thousand-watt smile and said, How can I help you? Now she's at the pinnacle of power and... She's still asking, how can I help you? I will be, I'll be so happy when she actually enters the White House as president because she will break my record as the president who spent the most time at McDonald's. History buffs will recall that former President Clinton was somewhat famous for visiting McDonald's restaurants while out on his morning jogs, an activity that played into the picture his opponents tried to paint of him as a borderline obese hillbilly slob. This, of course, could not have been further from the truth, as Mr. Clinton was, in fact, a relatively physically healthy hillbilly sophisticate. Plus, the beginning of his presidential administration overlapped with the heyday of original recipe McDonald's pizza, so it is quite likely he was exposed to said menu item, or even tried it himself. Up until now, I have declined to pursue this avenue of investigation due to my understanding that Mr. Clinton had been driven from public life after having been exposed as a regular passenger on a private airline named after a beloved character from the fiction of Vladimir Nabokov. But I suppose his appearance at this year's DNC means bygones have officially been declared bygones. 
With all this in mind, it appears the impending Harris administration might represent the best chance in many years that McDonald's pizza could return to the menu, which places me in a difficult position. As previously mentioned, it is against international law for a journalist to cover political matters in a way that might be seen to violate the sacred pact of neutrality. This is why my colleagues at the New York Times, when criticizing Mr. Trump's proposal to concentrate immigrant populations into camps for deportation, re-education, or mass unaliving, they also have to simultaneously publish an article about how such a policy is actually no worse than Ms. Harris's plan to subsidize loans for first-time homeowners. If one article were to appear in print without the neutralizing effect of the other, all the staff at the New York Times could be arrested by Interpol and sentenced to hard labor in a Swedish prison camp. Yes, even Will Shorts. But my background as the world's foremost expert on McDonald's pizza matters, such as whatever happened to it, etc., uniquely qualifies me for a position within the Harris administration that would further the cause of McDonald's pizza's return. For example, as Pizza Czar, or some such. For quite a while now, I have devoted my professional, personal, and romantic life to my work as a journalist, and I am in no way eager to leave the profession or give up the significant French benefits that go along with the title. But it would frankly be imprudent of me to dismiss outright the possibility of setting my journalistic career aside so that I may legally become a partisan flack in service to a bureaucracy that might somewhat align with a few of my own personal desires. As of now, I have made no decision on the matter, but in the interest of due diligence, I thought I might do some research into the steps that would be needed to renounce my journalism ship, the first of which having to do with my credentials. Thank you for calling 3M. Hello, thank you for calling 3M Consumer Support. This is Maria. Can I have your first and last name, please? Certainly. My first name is Brian. That's Brian with one R. And my last name is Thompson. T-H-O-M-P, son. Thank you. Brian, how can I help you? Well, I purchased a Scotch brand thermal laminator some time ago. I am an investigative journalist, and I use the laminator to laminate my press credentials, but it looks like I might be giving up the title of journalist, so I was wondering how I might delaminate my credentials. That is a good question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, let me let me do uh, a quick research, because um, I'm not completely sure if that can be done Hmm. so but i need i need to make sure so give me just a few minutes and i'll be right back okay Okay, certainly thank you thank you thank you for holding uh man just question you mentioned you the thermal laminator right Correct. The Scotch brand thermal laminator, model number TL1302Z, or as we call it in the United States, Z. (laughs) Okay. Great. Thank you. So, um, let's see. I just have one quick question Um, regarding the hold music I was just listening to. Maybe you don't know the answer, but was that Oasis? I could hear what you were listening to, but um, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Just wondering. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, I was I'm still working to get you the answer. I'm I'm talking with the the product lead. Okay. And um, and uh, let's see. What what happens is that if you use like a thermal laminator, it's like um, like a hot melt adhesive. So once it's laminated, um. Pretty much the adhesive is, it, it is already melted. Oh, okay. So it's it can't be unmelted. Correct. No, I'm not. I'm not getting any 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 positive huh. answer. 
for your your question. Yes, no, well, that's I would say no. that's just a little bit surprising. Mm-hmm. I thought that maybe a delaminating feature would be a part of the product just for safety reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, what if yeah. someone accidentally laminated a baby? <laughs> well, yes, I, I hope nobody put a baby on a laminator, but I will. I will, I will put the feedback on. Um, because that's, that is actually a good suggestion that we may have something in the future or maybe additional suggestions. So I don't know. Let's okay. Get out okay. Thank you. And see how it goes. But maybe if you can try to cut it down, maybe will work. Mm, but otherwise, well, it is a very tight end. The thing is, is that I'm not sure. I, I might in the future return to journalism, uh-huh. so I don't want to completely destroy my credentials. Um. um it was very difficult to fit all of those words on there. It grants me all of my journalistic rights, uh, all the rights and privileges that I'm afforded here to and forth with as a journalist. And um, also, I signed it. Yeah, okay. No, well, well, thank you in that case for understanding. And uh, as I mentioned, I will put the feedback on um, because that is actually a good question, the one okay. you had. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Um, is there any questions <laughs> you have for me? I, I do not have any additional questions, but I don't know if you have any other questions for me. Mm, I do not have any for you, so I guess we are even. Okay, well, in that case, thank you for going through. I hope you have a great day. You too. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Do you know what happened to pizza at McDonald's? Do you remember it? Please send all correspondence to pizza at McDonald's at gmail.com. To support the show, please join my Patreon at patreon.com slash pizza at McD's for exclusive benefits. And for more information, including links to social media, merchandise opportunities, etc., visit pizza at McDonald's.com. Thank you to my invaluable Patreon producers. Solomon Goudsward, Andy McH, Jeffrey Francis Sylvia. Adam Crump, Dan Dreyer, Polly Egan, Creighton Barron, Grant Bacon, Andrew Ahmed Rubin, Pam Gabriel, Kimberly King, Brad Allen Thompson, Jay Poop, Thomas Young, Billy Jean, Calvin Thomas, Joe Kajic, Andrew Duffy, Will, Gerald Lewis, Bipolar Biped, Opus Moreski, Jacob Ford, Kyle Tarak, and Laurel Paul. I'm Brian Thompson, investigative journalist.